Welcome to the Newsmaker, coming to you from the Science Unlimited conference in Montreux. Do you want to stay young forever? Well, my guest today is David Sinclair, who is a leading scientist on longevity and may have a cure against aging and even how to reverse it. David, thank you so much for your time. You're now 50 years old. What do you do against your own aging? Well, I wish I did more exercise. I, I do a little bit of exercise each week, um, but I also try to be a little bit hungry every day. That's the one bit of advice that I, I would give, that is uh, don't always eat every meal. And we've known for centuries that being a little bit hungry is good for you. So what do you eat? I mean, I cannot see any single gray hair on you. <laughs> Not yet. Uh, we will see. Uh, so far, so good. Uh, I eat a, a fairly standard diet. Uh, I try to eat vegetables more than meat. Um, but other than that, uh, it's mostly about the quantity or the lack of food that I think is most important. So our viewers will be interested to know what else they can do to slow down uh, the aging process. Do you have any more secret uh, recipes? Well, I, th I think becoming puffed, doing a bit of exercise every few days is, is key. You can reduce your chance of diseases by 40% by just getting out of the chair, doing a little bit of running or cycling. I try to do that, but most of my life is at a keyboard, unfortunately. So these are very easy things to do. Um, it's actually, it actually saves money not eating as much. Um, I think if I ate everything I wanted to, I would be really quite a big, big person. Um, so it's, it's healthy, it makes you feel better, and you'll probably live longer as well. And decades of medical research have shown as well that cutting down on calories is also prolonging and extending the lifespan. But does like eating less chips and chocolates really help? Uh, well, I think everything in moderation, you know, chocolates are not going to kill you. Um, but I think if, if you constantly eat too many calories and too many uh, foods that don't have nutrition, a lot of nutrition, then, uh, then that's still going to be a problem. So I, I actually gave up eating desserts when I was 40, 10 years ago, um, although I sneak a little bit from my wife when I get a chance. So have you become younger in that case? Uh, well, I, I don't know if I've become younger. I, I did a blood test that, that said that it predicts your age, uh, and I was able to take my age from 58 at the time down to 31.4, according to this blood test. Uh, and so I think with the healthy lifestyle, uh, at least blood tests say that I'm younger than I used to be. You are a biologist and professor of genetics at Harvard and also known for your work on resveratrol as a uh, anti-aging dietary uh, supplement. How extensive is the medical use and application already? Well, what we discovered actually is that there are genes in the body that control how long we live and also which diseases we, we get. And so these genes, are, they have a name, they're called sirtuins. And think of these genes as protectors of the body. And when we diet, uh, eat a healthy lifestyle, eat healthy foods and we exercise, we can actually turn these genes on. And at least in mice, if you make a mouse that has more of these genes, they're much healthier for longer and they get sick just at the end of life. So that's what we would love to have. I would love to, to help humanity and have people live until they're 80 or 90 and die much more quickly instead of what we do now is keeping one part of the body healthy but not all parts of the body. Um, and so what, what I do is I find molecules like resveratrol that will turn on these genes. Uh, we have some clinical trials right now with new types of molecules that are we think even better than resveratrol from red wine that are in, in early safety studies in people. And we're hoping that in the next few years, we will have a medicine that could treat rare diseases and eventually many millions of people as well. There are many other anti-aging pills as well, like TORC1, for example. Are people nowadays not tending to overconsume them and use them like aspirin in any kind of bad circumstance? Uh, well, it, it's an interesting world we live in. We, for the last thousand years, maybe longer, people uh, have been wanting to slow down their aging process by taking this and that. But the science of aging, longevity as we call it, uh, has re really reached a point where we understand largely why we age and how to control it. 
at least in lab studies. And, uh, and we're at the, the verge of, of things actually becoming true medicines. But right now, uh, there's, a, there's a tendency for co the consumer world to be a little ahead of the science of what we actually know. And you can understand uh, customers and patients who want medicines that aren't yet available trying all sorts of things. Um, but the good news is uh, it's not all bad science. There's some very good science. There have been a couple of Nobel Prizes awarded for this research. Uh, but these medicines are just around the corner. Uh, and that's what I'm focused on. It's to try and get these medicines to patients as soon as possible. And you're also focused on writing a new book, uh, Lifespan, which is also about reversing the process of aging. Does this mean that elderly people will become babies again? Well, I don't know about babies, but, but what I wrote in Lifespan is all, all of the knowledge that I've gained over 20 years and synthesized it into one idea about what causes us to age. And uh, what I believe is our bodies still have the information in them to be young again. Uh, in, in the same way that a compact disc becomes scratched, and if you polish the compact disc, you can still read the music. And we're finding in the lab that we can create the scratches in, in a mouse and make it get older quicker. But what's most exciting is we're just writing up some scientific papers now that show we can actually reverse the clock of aging. So tell me how this would work on a human being, not just on mice. So I can tell you that a lot of my research until recently has been uh, taking pills or put the molecule in water and drink it. This is a new therapy. It's very powerful. Um, it's a gene therapy. Uh, and what it does is it reprograms the cell to read the genes as though the cells were young again. And I think this is the problem with aging is that our cells don't read the genes at the right time the way when we were young. Just like a scratched compact disc, the reader will skip the songs. So our cells are skipping the genes. And this gene therapy tells the cell to read the right genes so that the brain cells become young and, and uh, we see the muscle cells become young again. And we can actually measure the clock of aging. We can read it with our machines and we see that the clock goes backwards. The anti-aging industry is also a booming business, uh, David. According to Orbis Research, uh, the industry hit some 43 billion US dollars in 2018 and will reach some 55 billion US dollars by 2023. What do you make of these staggering numbers? Well, so the aging field, uh, because the research has gone so well um, and the public is even more interested in aging more than ever, uh, this field is, is booming. Um, it's booming in customer uh, and consumer products, as you mentioned, but also in the pharmaceutical development, which I'm in. Most people don't know that there are now dozens of companies working on medicines that could treat aging itself. And someone's going to be successful in the next few years, and it's an extremely exciting time. And I, I just want uh, your viewers to, to know that uh, the science has come a long way and it's not snake oil anymore, it's the cutting edge of biology right now and, and pharmaceuticals, I'm thinking, will be just around the corner. What about the uh, Swiss pharma giants here? I yeah. mean, Novartis, for example, is also developing anti-aging drugs and so on, but still not pouring that much money into this uh, area. Yeah. Do you see that change? I do see a change already. Uh, Nestle is also working on products that will potentially tackle aging. And actually here in Switzerland, in Geneva, Lausanne, there is a hub of science and economic activity around aging. And it's just growing every year. Some scientists uh, from the EPFL in Lausanne, uh, they wrote in uh, 2016 that even simply eating the fruit uh, pomegranate can actually slow down the process of aging. Is there yeah. not a natural way to prevent uh, wrinkles? Well, what, the, what they showed is urolithin A is a molecule that you can pull out of pomegranates that in some people is converted to a longevity molecule. And the science is very strong. The scientists here in Switzerland are extremely world-class. Um, so I, I believe that this has a chance of delaying aspects of aging in people as well. And I'm excited about the progress of, of that work. Here in Switzerland, we also have a lot of skincare companies like La Prairie and Raphael L and, uh, uh, for example, the uh, company Valmont and so on. That's also a booming business. Um, yeah. How do you see that? Well, the, so the cosmetic industry, I, I see two types of company. There's the, the companies that focus on traditional antioxidant approaches, which have been around for 30, 40 years. 
There are some very innovative companies here in Switzerland and in France that I'm aware of that are using these new discoveries about longevity genes to actually treat the skin. And these same molecules could also slow down aging in the rest of the body as well. But is this not just business and PR? Are these skincare products really working? Uh, well, I don't know for sure. I'm not studying skin. But I do know some of the science behind these products is real. So I think it, it's possible that we finally have products that uh, truly reverse aspects of aging itself, not just cover it up. David, uh, so you mentioned to me before the interview as well that you started a new company in 2017 together with a board member from Logitech. Tell me what it's all about. Oh, so my goal is to bring together people from all around the world to work on this problem of making us healthier for longer. And my latest group of companies is under one group called Life Biosciences, headquarters in Boston. And we were very lucky to have one of our board members, Bracken Darrell, the CEO of Logitech. And he joined because he had a great interest in what we're doing. But we also, we really like having him on the board because he's got expertise in, in AI, uh, data analysis, which is also what is driving our discovery process. Are you looking for more corporations and collaborations uh, with us, with companies and executives in that case? We are, and one of the reasons I keep coming back to Switzerland is to talk with scientists and, and other industries here about partnering. Um, there's, there's one that I'm working on right now that we think uh, we could have a really big impact on aging. And uh, so it's, it's actually surprised me that within all of Europe that Switzerland uh, is the hub of, of a lot of what I'm interested in. Living forever has been a dream for many people, according to the UN uh, World Population Prospects. Uh, the uh, life expectancy at birth uh, for men is 68 years and for women uh, 72 years. How long should a human being live nowadays? Well, I think if people can stay healthy without diseases, um, they should have a right to live a very long time, but also have the right to leave the planet when they want to. And actually Switzerland is one of the few places in the world where you can do that. So I applaud uh, the Swiss for that. Uh, but I think it's, it, it should, no government and no society should dictate when somebody has to die. And I think that we should all fight, as we have for the last 200 years, to make people live the longest and the healthiest life possible. So it should be a personal choice to decide when to go. Well, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and I don't think anyone can tell you when to die or when not to die. And for how long do you yourself want to live? Uh, well, I'm not afraid of, of dying. Uh, I have three uh, wonderful teenage kids, so I'd love to see where they end up. And I'm also very excited about where uh, humanity is going in the future. You know, I've always dreamed of us uh, leaving this planet, uh, you know, flying cars, all that stuff. I love the, the idea of the future. And that's one of the reasons I'm a scientist. I want to make the future happen faster than it would without me being here. Um, so I, I would just like to stick around uh, to see what happens, but I also think that I have a lot more work to do. So I, I would love to live uh, more than 100 years old, uh, if it's possible, um, but that's not why I do the research. What do you do your research for? Well, I think we all want to leave the planet knowing we've made a difference, that our lives have been worth something. And so that's what drives me. I would love to, when I die, know as my final thought that this place will be better for having lived here. Thank you so much for your time and good luck for your research, David. Thank you for having me.